President Biden was absolutely correct in calling this sheer evil. Hamas is ISIS. And just as ISIS was crushed, so too will Hamas be crushed. And Hamas should be treated exactly the way ISIS was treated. They should be spit out from the community of nations. No leader should meet them. No country should harbor them. And those that do should be sanctioned. Tony, my friend, I say to you, I say to all of us, there will be many difficult days ahead. But I have no doubt that the forces of civilization will win. And the reason that's true is because we understand what is the first prerequisite of victory. It's what you just said in our meeting, moral clarity. This is a time, a particular time, a special time, that we must stand tall, proud, and united against evil. Tony, you are taking that stand. America is taking that stand. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, America, for standing with Israel today, tomorrow, and always. Mr. Prime Minister, um, I'm grateful to be back in Israel in this incredibly difficult moment for this nation, but in fact, for the entire world. If you'll permit me, um, personal aside, I come before you not only as the United States Secretary of State, but also as a Jew. My grandfather, Maurice Blinken, fled pogroms in Russia. My stepfather, Samuel Pizar, survived concentration camps, Auschwitz, Dachau, Majdanek. So, Prime Minister, I understand on a personal level the harrowing echoes that Hamas's massacres carry for Israeli Jews, indeed, for Jews everywhere. I also come before you as a husband and father of young children. It's impossible for me to look at the photos of families killed, such as the mother, father, and three small children murdered as they sheltered in their home in kibbutz near Oz, and not think of my own children. This was just one of Hamas's countless acts of terror. In a litany of brutality and inhumanity that, yes, brings to mind the worst of ISIS. Babies slaughtered, bodies desecrated, young people burned alive, women raped, parents executed in front of their children, children in front of their parents. How are we even to understand this, to digest this? And yet, at the same time, at the same time that we've been shocked by the depravity of Hamas, we've also been inspired by the bravery of Israel citizens. The grandfather who drove over an hour to a kibbutz under siege armed only with a pistol, and rescued his kids and grandkids. The mother, who died shielding her teenage son with her body, giving her life to save his, giving him life for a second time. The volunteer security teams on the kibbutzes, who swiftly rallied to defend their friends and neighbors, despite being heavily outnumbered. And we're lifted by the remarkable solidarity of the Israeli people, demonstrated in the long lines of people giving blood, in the hundreds of thousands of reservists who've mobilized, some rushing home from abroad, people around the country opening their homes to fellow citizens displaced from the South, 
people of Israel have long and rightly prided themselves on their self-reliance, on their ability to defend themselves, even when the odds are stacked against them. The message that I bring to Israel is this. You may be strong enough on your own to defend yourself, but as long as America exists, you will never ever have to. We will always be there by your side. That's the message that President Biden delivered to the Prime Minister from the moment this crisis began. It's the message that I and my other colleagues in the government have delivered to our Israeli counterparts on a daily, even an hourly basis.